a balance of diversity in Gloucester that's amazing. Growing up, uh, I mean, I was spoiled, I guess, because I think me and my friends just had a better life than some of the kids now. I mean, I know it's great to have technology and social media and everything else, but I was out there. We were outside with the neighborhood. Hey guys, welcome to the Chef's Pantry. I'm Anna, um, and you're in a live cooking show, and you're in for a treat. Today is a very important day. We are with North Shore royalty. I am very excited. Um, so my producers and I, over the last couple of months, have really talked about like if we want to get political with the cooking show, and you know we're like, well, you know, food is the great equalizer, and coming to the table and appetite is what really brings people together. So we try to keep it light. Um, but we're making an exception today because we have a politician who has one of the best red sauces I have ever had in my life, Sapatia Thekin of Gloucester. She is a force. She has a huge heart. She's done so much for the community way beyond Gloucester, navigating in these really wild times, bringing people together, not only with her passion, but with her food. She's cooked for most people in the, the wider area. Um, so we're really lucky. She's been cooking up a storm, and we're going to dive right in to her kitchen on Muscle Point um, and see see what is going on. Sabatia, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm already started. I um, This is what I want to show you what's going to be the ending. I have um, my tomatoes. See? Oh, you've got it, too. I love it. Um, it's I love cooking. To me, it's trust with these people. can do yoga. But you don't want to see me sitting on the floor, trust me. So I cook. I love to cook. Um, I think because being Sicilian, um, we were born and raised with food all around us. You know, someone was born, you brought food. Someone was sick, you brought food. You know, someone passed weddings. It's all about food. And it's about what kind of food that you need to bring. And this recipe here is the favorite recipe of the summer. It takes five minutes, literally. You know, my a pot is boiling. By the time it finishes boiling, I'm done with this. And so sometimes we have at muscle points, we have a girls' night, or we just sitting around saying, you know what, let's cook. You know, sometimes I have the, you know, Cape Ann plein air here uh, and Vogel here. You've had so many different things here that they're outside. I'm going like, mm, you know what, I think I'm going to stop cooking. I'll come in here and make this. And that's how you tried it, Anna. And you're going like, what is that? Is, is that new? I says, oh, no, this is just basic tomatoes, buying tomatoes from a garden. Um, and you have pas, uh, basil, fresh from the garden. If you see, we already picked it here, and it's already picked from the garden. And Ooh, the basil, yeah. So yeah. Nice. It's, it's Gloucester air, the salt air around here. It's just great. And then I went to Scalafani, and I always get my favorite oil, Pagano oil. Then I put it in little jars because I can't stand this. I'm always making a mess, so I'll just put it in like a little jar. Oh, I like that. Yeah, and, I, and then it's easier, and I, I cook with it. And then I said to him, you know what? I need some grated cheese. Now, I don't buy grated cheese at a market. I try to find a local Italian store that will grate it because it's, it's a freshness. If you see, it's kind of like coarse and soft, and, and it, it, it's just so different. It's not right fine, fine, fine. It's better to work. You can mush it and see. Ooh. You close it together. It's, you can just smell it. And then I have my garlic, which I peeled, and I'll show you. I grate that too. I don't chop that. And then for later, I want to share with something else. This is Rigotta from Scalafani Bakery right here in Gloucester. It's not for the pastries, it's for cooking. Mm. You can make lasagna or anything you want. And if you, it's, look how soft. Oh, yeah. You want it. That's so easy to make in a pasta or anything else you want to make it with. And um, I'll show you, I do a favorite zucchini dish. That's our favorite in the summer is go in the garden. Whatever you have, you can make pasta with it. It doesn't matter what's out there, you can. So this is my favorite memory of you. I think this is our two-year anniversary for this. Yes, yes. Individual red sauce. You came in. Now, I tell people. And you know, you guys we were celebrating the Cape Ann Plein Air kickoff festival. And you just... You just barreled in with this bag full of tomatoes, a hunk of garlic. There were a hundred people, maybe milling around. And I'm like, what? This woman has superpowers in the kitchen. No, it's very simple. Like I said, to I said something. I know you're not one for recipes, but what about ratios? Like tomato to garlic to cheese? No, no, 
No. You don't have to do with anything. <laughs> no. no, you know what? You can use this kind of a grater, and I use that for the garlic. Okay. I usually use four, I'm talking about big tomatoes, at least four per one pound of spaghetti. Okay. Oh, those do okay. really good fine ripened tomatoes. I have a mix. Yeah. I mean, really, really big. If you have smaller ones, six small ones, but yeah. And yet, you know what? You want them really ripe. So you know what? If you're thinking I'm going to do in this, put them in the windowsill to get them ripe. And then you just grate it. See what I'm doing? You yeah. just That's all it is. Great. And this, this is where the therapy comes in, right? You can really yeah. stress relief. Yeah, it really, Anna, you know more than I. You know. You're married to an Italian, so you know. <laughs> Well, it's true. Being married to an Italian, the rite of passage is nailing a good red sauce. So this is... You know what? And you know, you know what I like this? This here, we don't have to fight about is it gravy or is it zugu. This is just a fresh tomato sauce. Everyone can agree. And this, look, people will be surprised. Everything comes off and you just have the skin. And you yeah, put that over there. You don't need that. You get your next one. It's all washed and clean and just great. And it's it's it's... I'm telling you right now, we had a busy weekend, let's say, in Gloucester. Very, very busy. Um, I appreciate that, you know, people want to see Gloucester, but this weekend was like a combination of the 4th of July fiesta and any other kind of holiday pushed into one. It was a little bit too much, but so getting that really grated is pretty good. It's really a stress release. And you know what else I do too is I get past, I get your um, basil. I used to say in Italian, the buzzer to go. And when I want to do a lot and I just like to hear that noise and I don't want to chop, I have a favorite scissors that I use just for vegetables and see how I'm just Ooh. like that. It gives you more and you just chop it. Nice. So you have it all together. I do my pasta like that too if I'm going to make the breadcrumbs. So I'm, while I'm grating this, I, um, I peel some garlic and I have to, you know what, when I was younger, I used to peel the garlic at my mom's house and we all fight because we hated it because the smell would stay in your hands for three days. And now I bet you lately, lately I, I was noticed I'm going like, you know, I miss my mother, especially on Sundays when she is making the zugo. I don't smell that garlic in the house. I don't smell that aroma. Something's missing. I mean, it tastes all right, but something was missing. And I realized the garlic that I was buying actually wasn't organic and it wasn't from here and I'm going like where is this from and I was upset where I found out what it was from so now I go to I make a special delivery and I go to the common chrome Gloucester and I get the purple one the purple is the Spanish Italian one and let me tell you something when you peel this you know you're peeling you yeah. know exactly exactly it's perfect and you know what I leave it whole and when I want an idea you can either bang it set, but I'm going to show you what I do so I'm going to finish this here. I have one more to go. How are you? How many more do you have to go? Well, I have probably, um, I don't know, six big ones, like the equivalent of oh, six. Wow. That's perfect. That's perfect. I have just this one more to go. Um, so the thing I like about the purple garlic is that it has sort of this ancient quality. The paper around it is is a little bit thicker, and I feel like it must help keep all that big flavor in there. It has to do something because I'm telling you, when you, it's still in my hands, and you know what? It brings me back home. It brings yeah. me back to when I, I don't want to do it. I hated it. Same thing with grating the cheese. We hated it. The Italian Sicilian said, la fissa rato gaju. And it was like the fool grates the cheese. And we hated it. No, I don't want to be the fool today. You do it and tell my sisters. You do it. La fissa rato lo gaju. And so, you know what? Now I love it. Now, you know what, some of the traditions that we hated when we were younger were going, you know what, I'm glad I learned them. I'm glad that, you know, I love to cook when I was younger and my daughters too. I love having that because you can't, sometimes you can't get it in a cookbook, Anna. Our parents, my mother never measured. Mom, what? That's all. Mom, what did you put in? You know, and someone says, oh, you need a cookbook. Oh, are you kidding me? If I had to measure everything that I do. And I tell people when I cook, you know what, there is no wrong recipe. You have to like it, not me. We're not in a restaurant. We're not doing a cookbook. So whatever your family's used to, and if they like a little bit of garlic, you add a little. If they like a lot, you add a lot. There's no wrong recipe. And I'll show you because I like a lot of garlic. So I peeled a lot of garlic because I'm going to make two different dishes today. Very quickly, very easy. And you don't cook this. This you don't cook. So as you see. Well, and it's good for the hot weather when you don't want to be standing over a boiling. No, you don't. You know what? So... You get the garlic. Yeah. You get the, what are you going to do with the garlic? Are you, you going to it? 
it. Great. Okay. Now, while you're grating it, you'll see it breaking apart in tiny little pieces. Here for your fingers, I tell people, because to me it's like nothing. Are you using the coarse side or like the microplaner side? Are you the side that? that I used the the tomatoes. Now, if you have this one and you want to use this one, yeah. doesn't matter what kind of grater I grate it, and I just because it chops in pieces. But you know what it does better? It gets the juices out. That's yeah. the whole secret. Yeah. That's the whole secret is it gets. Smell it. It gets the juices out. When you chop something, it's already done. When you cut it, it's already done. But you're great in this. So I already added now. This is my third one. <laughs> um, when you, and it's, <laughs> I love a lot of garlic. Don't kiss me today. Um, so when you grate it, it gets, see how it gets like that all over it? Yeah. It's okay. Because it's it's the juice that's coming out. You'll, you'll see it. You'll see it like the little vein inside. Look, it's perfect. See? And they, yeah, I see it. You've got nerves of steel, Safadia, and that pretty manicure. You're 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 not. No, I. You know, I'm so used to this that you know what. Look at that, and then I go inside and pull. Look at that. See that? Pull it all in there. Okay. Well, I'm not done. I like one more. So I I I like garlic. I'll tell you the truth. I do a clove every tomato. Now people might not like all that garlic. They might say, I can't take that. I'll you know I have hot bread. I won't be able to take all that because it. You know what? When you grate it this way, it's totally different than when you cut it or chop it. Totally different. You don't get the same taste that you do here. Here, it's a unique taste. Now, not everyone grates it when they make this spaghetti. I do. Yeah, I, your I like it. So we're done on that one. Hmm. And so now you just add, you just add a little bit, like I, like my mother said, a little pinch of salt. Okay. And you're just using a traditional table salt. So salt. I mean, kosher salt. Yeah. Any salt is no whatever, a little bit of pepper. I go like this, but I want to make sure. Yeah. And then I'll add my olive oil. Okay. Your special olive oil. I have yeah. And then I just you know what? I just pour it like this because don't forget it doesn't have, you want it to stick to the spaghetti. So I'd say maybe, I don't know, a quarter of a cup, but you know what? You want to add more, you can add more, or you don't. And then I'll add some um grated cheese just like this. Some Great. people don't like to add the cheese because people might not like the cheese. I know that mm -hmm. I like it. And I know everyone here likes it, so I'm adding it. But you don't yeah. have to. There's nothing wrong. In a little spoon. I like that you're going to get heat and a little bit of a pepper kick with the garlic. Oh, yeah. You see it? See how it is? You no, know, it has a really nice salinity to it, too. So, like, just paying attention and tasting as you're mixing in, I think, is really oh, so good. And can I tell you something? You can use this. I'm going to give you a secret. Now, I, I chopped my basil. Now, don't ask me how many pieces. Okay. Because it's just whatever I like. I smell it. And so I say, oh, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> There's nothing wrong because, you know why? If you like more basil and you want it more sweeter, mm -hmm. then you'll add less garlic, more basil. But if you see it, how it is, the fresh tomatoes, you'll, you'll look at it. it. And it's like all have all coarse. And that's fine. And that's done. And the water's already boiling. So I can cook my spaghetti now. Ooh. And so... Yeah, and it's done. But you know what I do with this too? Right. If you have, you have to try this. If you ever put like salmon or swordfish or even tuna on the grill, I mm. put this on top after it's Ooh. done. Nice. It's so good. It's so good. And we do what you can do with mackerel. But you know what? In the um, in the winter, when I says, you know, my husband likes some lamb, I actually soak my lamb in it overnight. Your lamb? In a lamb. Wow. Yeah. And, and, I'll add, and I'll add a little squeeze of lemon. The acid in the tomatoes, and we don't have the garden ones, but the acid in the tomatoes and that little lemon gets out the game flavor that you have in lamb. You right. can do it with duck. You can do it with people like deer. I just don't do deer, but I'm just saying a, a, a gamey animal that they cook. But I do it with the lamb, and it's so good, and I just throw it, the rest out because I don't like the juice that comes off, but then I'll make a fresh one, and then after we do it. Yeah, you got that, Anna. See that? See, yeah. you, like, you like your basil, honey. You like your basil. That's I'm what like, I do. I'm, I'm smelling it, and I'm liking it. And, okay, you know what? I've been doing this with, with this when I um, had the first round fresh, like you've intended. Sometimes when we've had leftovers, I like to do second night of baked pasta. I fold in some fresh mozzarella and yes. toss it in the oven. And then I've also used it as a pizza sauce, but raw. Yep. I flash bake the pizza and then pour this on top, fresh. The naan bread. You ever tried the flatbread, the naan bread? Yes. The flatbread. 
Okay, my daughter taught me this. You put it on the grill. Yeah. It's already cooked. Then you get the raw, and then you just slice some uh, fresh mozzarella on it, mm -hmm. and then she'll put um, that vinegar glaze. Oh my God, I'm going home to make that now. <laughs> it's so good. It really is. You know what? This basic thing that you get in your garden is takes two seconds to make, and you can make it with any recipe you want. Mm -hmm. And so you have people over, or someone comes unexpectedly, and you're going like, "All right, I only took up two hot dogs. What am I going to do now?" Well, I'm hoping everyone has. Pasta at home. Always have pasta. It can last. This yeah. can go with linguine. It can go with penny. It can go with any kind of spaghetti. Um, and you know what? It takes two seconds to make them while your, your guests are enjoying a good drink. Speaking of drinks, um, I'm going to go fry some zucchini. And uh, zucchini from the garden I'm so proud of. And um, I'm going to show you another quick dish that you're going to make with this wonderful, delicious ricotta. It's uh, la vaixa la yelloyo con la zucchini fritta in cavo con poiettino di ricotta. Oh, which is spaghetti with the garlic and the olive oil with a little bit of ricotta and fried zucchini. It's so good. People go, and you can't mix that. Don't tell me what I like and don't tell me what I can do because there's no wrong recipe. And that's what I'm saying, people. It doesn't matter how much salt and pepper you put. If you can't have salt, you don't need it because let me tell you something. The reason why I put a little bit of salt in this because my tomatoes weren't mm. really, really ripe, so it, it won't have that natural, natural flavor. I needed it a little bit more ripe because it has to be really juicy right and you know it just come out of the garden so um and then you notice here's the skin i love it left over i don't know what you want to do with the skin people have recipes i don't want to talk about it no i'm going to go to the frying pan and i'm going to show you how to uh, i'm going to fry some zucchini yes what do you have barilla absolutely okay. i have one naturally uh, when i went to the common crow i picked up some linguine the organic linguine i had to pick up that so i said you know i think i'll try linguine today because i was going to do the ricotta so i picked up two pounds and i don't need my pasta long okay um i'm gonna throw it in what i do with my pasta is i go like this it's already broken in half i use my pot that's another one you're cracking Ah, the stress for these is so good. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I don't like it long. I don't want it twirly. I hate when people suck it all in and it makes a mess and everything else. I like it halfway so you can twirl the Italian way with the spoon and the fox. So I'm going to go put this in and finish my zucchini. I'll be right back. Okay, kind of for sharing. Okay, now we are at um, our friends Karen and Warren's right now, Muscle Point, and they, like any good resident has a signature cocktail called the muscle point so i'm going to pull this in while safatia gets her zucchini going and i've had this it's so delicious we made it on new england living with warren and um as he says you get funnier the more you drink so it's a little bit of vodka some oysterville vodka oh karen good you're the queen you know how you really do it walk us <laughs> through this cocktail i can't get enough of it's fantastic. I can't tell you how many hundreds we've served. <laughs> Good. So it's been proven, tested, and perfected. Absolutely. It's changed a little. As I told you before, when we first started doing it, we were really fancy. We used to do it with a shaker. Or we used to puree our, our own raspberries and all of that. And now we sort of do that. We get right into it and get, make it faster. I love it. Okay. So the, the queen of the cart is the Lillet Blanc. Yes. What do you Just love a little that? bit. Mm. It has a really, it has a really beautiful floral kind of thick, heady note to it. Exactly. It's lovely, and it works so well with the raspberry. Um, I was really excited. I'm going to bring a bottle over the next time I see you guys. But this is in honor of my dad. I didn't have raspberries in the freezer, but I'm probably going to get in trouble by the time the pasta is ready to pour out. It's my dad's raspberry cordial that's made with 180 proof raspberry. Oh, go easy on the vodka. Does that count? I think it might work. I'll report. Go that. for it. So we'll do a little splash of that. This is oh, like a nice color. Okay, and then grapefruit juice, right? Yep. Did you put the vodka in? Oh, I started with the vodka. Oh, good for you, girl. Okay. Yeah. And then a little lemon? Yep, a little bit of lemon. Top off with soda water Great. and raspberries or a lemon. Great. Okay. Perfect. Delish. I like that blush color. Oh, yeah. Mmm. So good. It's like we're we're all together. 
Thank you, Karen. I know. It's summer, summer, summer drink. <laughs> Perfect. It's light. It's bright, fresh, and I love that um, the how the raspberries and the lule blanc kind of give it a nuance that isn't. It's very, very light, very, very fresh, but it does have a, a layered feel to it. Yeah, it's it's dynamite. It's dangerous. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay, so we've got the pot of water boiling back to business and then walk us through your process for the fried zucchini you you so I have, I put the and then add a little garlic not yet the garlic is not until after i'm going to fry it with the oil of the zucchini now i fried this with olive oil too the same olive oil and if you see i already have some here is that because my base and so in here you'll see i'm sliding now i'm going to show you there's a thick piece there's a thin piece. There's no right way to cut a zucchini, okay? I don't cut it evenly so it all cooks even. I don't cut it each shape perfectly and make sure. And I don't measure. I did three zucchinis here. The more zucchini, the more you have to eat. It cooks as long as it's soft like this. We don't want it cooked to crispy because this here is going to go with the ribosa. After, you're going to mix it with the oil and a little bit of water. Now, that's the whole basis that the scotch from your pasta is going to be your, like your soft. And I'll show you in a second. One was done. Great. Here, that's all it is. I added a little bit of salt, no pepper. Um, it smells delicious. I'm going to take this out and then I'll add some nice garlic in here and let it cook while your pasta is cooking. Now you, you can cook your pasta al dente, whatever you want. There's no wrong way. It doesn't have to be all the way. It doesn't matter. You can do it really al dente. My brother-in-law actually, um, if he doesn't have it the way it says, like four minutes or four minutes, and you take it out, he won't eat it. Me, I don't care. Pasta, pasta, and I'll eat it anyway. <laughs> this is why you're the mayor of the people, Savatia. How important has cooking been as mayor for you? Well, you know what? I'll tell you something. It's um, I truly love cooking, and I love. It started with my sisters that we felt really bad. We had uh, my sister, older sister, was a cancer survivor. And we knew it was hard that, you know, and I worked at the hospital for 20 something years. And my biggest thing is that when you're going through chemo or you're going through things, you know, you're exhausted, it's hard to cook. So we started cooking for families. You know, we love cooking. And so, and then I heard that, you know, some can't have a certain kind, they can't have to take out because it can't be made with metal and this and that. So I, I was learning that way. I mean, I had my own private catering. You know, I, I did that when my husband, my first husband was a fisherman, and you know what, you do what you can to survive. So I always loved cooking, so you put it to good use, and that's what I did. But after he passed, you know, it was just totally different, it was very hard. There's certain things I really can't cook, I get emotional and I won't make them, so my daughter does. My kids all know how to cook. Um, I have one daughter who loves to cook with everything in garlic, and I have my oldest daughter, she's a great cook too, but only talk about garlic. Because she says that we forced her to eat broccoli with the garlic. I wish I had that when I was young. You know, it, it, it's so funny. It's, it's what they have and what they can eat. But you know what? I think that cooking to me and sharing what you make is amazing. I do that on Sundays. I show people, you know, I don't have the camera set up. I don't I don't sit there and let you see me, what I'm doing. I, you know, I take pictures and then I have to put it down because I need the other hand. And then, um, like right now, I would say to you, it's okay, I'm gonna have to shut the camera off because I gotta go cut the garlic and I gotta, you know, so yeah, they can actually see me and do it. It's kind of fun. So, um, yeah, I like that you're, you're putting those zucchini in the cast iron skillet too to get that great caramelization texture on the outside. Really, yeah, nice. that's it. And it's like it's already done. And like I said, I have it on low, I did it on low. You know, sometimes I'll drop one underneath and whatever. But here is now, this is the garlic. I'm going to put it on low so I don't burn it. Um, and the garlic's going to cook right quick. Great. Now I'm going to just put it on. And you're you're such a pleaser. I like that you have the raw tomato pasta or yeah. the fried zucchini ricotta pasta. So it's truly a easy summer meal buffet for for. Well, you know, some people can't eat that. Some people can't eat a red sauce because of you know they have some problem, gastro problems. So you know what? I don't want people to feel uncomfortable and just you know I'll have spaghetti with the butter. I mm. hate that. That's for my kids when they were younger. You know, I mean, once in a while you like it when you don't feel good. You want spaghetti noodles with the spaghetti. Everyone likes the pastina with the butter. That's a whole new thing. 
But other than that, I mean, and you can see I'm putting lots of garlic. I must have put so far, I don't know, six, seven cloves, it doesn't matter because it's fried and it's so good. And you, the whole house right now, I wish you could have a smell feature on these because I'm telling you, my best thing. And like I said, um, <laughs> this is the, I, I'll only use a purple garlic because um, the texture, the way it, it cooks, and the way it smells, and the way it's real. So, I might also the train. I'm going to give it a, a little dump and then mix in the red sauce. Yeah, so, see how I did that? Oh, ooh, nice. In the zucchini water? I see gold. Now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to take the water from, and I'm going to put it in the bowl because it's going to overflow. So I put about three ladles. Yeah, you have your salt and pepper. And so now I'm adding just ricotta that I got from Scalafani's. No. And adding, saving that pasta water and tossing it back is such a great way to get that. That's it. Now, so all you have to do is slowly let that cook like that and melt in. Okay, I'm going to give my red sauce a final taste because I feel like it changes when the flavors sit and infuse a little bit. And I'm going to strain my spaghetti and show you what I'm making. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this sauce makes me so happy. I went a little big with the pecorino. Did you? Yeah. I um I didn't you know what? I didn't put any I um didn't put too much, but you'd never wait till you put the spaghetti, you never put too much. No, you can eat that cold, you can eat it hot. Oh my gosh. And then I like to save a little bit on the side so then people can add more if they want. Yeah. And they're going to want it. Okay. One thing I talk too much because now I have to stir the, I forgot to stir the uh, linguine and it's kind of like a, I got to undo it. It clings together, but that's all right. We got to, and if you have it clicking, that's nothing. That's just my uh, little extra lemon on the stove. Okay. So I'm gonna now strain and strain this and I'll be right back in two seconds. Okay. And I'll show you. And I'll leave some of the fluid. And I like to take a little bit of the basil too, so we can pinch off like the baby leaves and use that as a little garnish. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, I am so passionate about this red sauce. This is fantastic. Okay. Well, I I'm ready. Okay. So, so I'm back on this one, and I'm adding now I'm adding pasta. Okay. And I'm going to add the red sauce. Now, like you said, I'm not going to add it all, but I'm adding cheese first because I wanted to get the flavor of the cheese. And Anna, I'm sorry to make you jealous. Look how fresh you can see how they grind it. That's so fresh. Scalafani's. You can't be Scalafani's. You just can't. I'm telling you, with the grated cheese, it's so, oh, I'm telling you. I'll leave that. Talk. And you just stir that a little bit like that. Okay. And then you add the red sauce. It's so pretty, isn't it, Nina? Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Oh. 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 Now, can I tell you something? My husband don't even like this. No. So I'm going to leave it here at one point. You're not going to leave it? I'm leaving this whole thing here. He won't eat this. He won't eat this. He likes the Vicky Pacu. He likes his cooked. Well, I'm seeing Terry, Lee, Katie, Joan, Carol, Nina. I think you've got a number of friends out there that want oh, to. Oh, yeah. Sedalia, Muscle Point friends are the best friends. <laughs> and you know what she forgot to tell you? That it was so funny that he made the perfect signature drink that he actually got the cups that says Muscle Point. I just love it. Just love it. So I, I'll add, the, add that there, and that goes. Now I'm going to show you. See? Mm. Same thing like that. Isn't it delicious? Mm. Now, wait till you see. I'm going to go back. Wait till you see the other one. So in here, I have... I want to get something. I don't want to burn myself. So in here, I put the ricotta like I told you. Okay. With the, like, all stir-fried. You see how that is? It's like mm -hmm. a 
a fettuccine. It's like the alfredo. You see that? See what's happening? Yeah, really nice. It just breaks yeah, down. It's like the uh, alfredo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I pour that in there. See how it comes out like an alfredo? Yes. Okay. It's an alfredo sauce, the Italian way. And you mix it in. And look at that. Look at that. It's an alfredo. It's 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 spaghetti with the ricotta. Look how wonderful that is. Mm. Look at that. So now, yeah, that the zucchini. Good. You put the zucchini in. Mm -hmm. Again, you mix it. Is there a bowl? I'll use mine. Put a bowl over there. So everyone gets a chance of that. Now come over and show you over here. Um, I think I have a bowl underneath here that I can put it in just to show you. It doesn't have to be fancy. Oh, we have a fancy oh, one. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get when you're at Muscle Point. Things seem to come right away. So um, I'm going to show you how this is. Oh, this, I'm telling you, you can smell the frying. And I like it, and it comes out. I'm going to pour it so you can see how it, that's like an Alfredo sauce. Look at that. Uh, that's And that's all gotha. That's all like, that's not butter and, and all that. This is just an Italian Alfredo sauce. You, um, They add shrimp to it. They add shrimp to it in Italy. They add peas if you wanted to. But look at that. Look how beautiful that is. And the zucchini's in there. So if the zucchini also self cooked, look at that. And then naturally you want the. Volare. I just love my food. I just love, love, love cooking. And look at that already. And you have two different meals for two types of people. No one feels that, you know, I can't have the sauce because I might just can't have too much ajudu. Or you have this little Alfredo one. And it's just simple. Two pounds of spaghetti, two types of people, volare. And don't be shy because it goes quick, right, Sabatia? Oh, I'm telling you, it was funny. It was you saw how it disappeared. So um, okay. I'm telling you right now, and that's why, if you noticed, I broke it in half mm. because too long is not good. I don't do it too long, but I'll show you. It's already broken in half, and you just right easy. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that Alfredo. That's perfect. That's, that's just it. And you get a zucchini, and you put the cheese. It's heavenly. And like I said, I like extra garlic. So there's really no right or wrong recipe. You had a little bit of salt and pepper. I didn't put any salt. Um, I didn't put any pepper because people might not like it. But it's because the the garlic, the way I have it in that one, you saw it on that one. You saw when you grated it. Pepper it. The garlic. It's so great, Zabadia. It is perfect, perfection. You don't need to change it. I told you, when you, when you actually... so. From my kitchen, which is Warren's Kitchen in Muscle Point, and that's what I love. It either uh, Lion and Mo, you can either get a vehicle, or if I can't afford the vehicle, he'll give me a break. I'll let me use the kitchen, and then I get my vehicle. So it's just great. You can't go wrong with Lion and Mo. You can't go wrong with Muscle Point. Um, it's just amazing. Who's going to give you your kitchen and, and say, "Well, here, go ahead." Because well, you don't want to. When you're a good cook, you drive a tough bargain. This has been such a pleasure, Safatia. I am so happy to these pasta dishes, and I just get to drive home with a beautiful Mercedes. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheers to you and Muscle Point. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, I'm inspired. I need to go find some zucchini, sniff some out before the bunnies get mine in the garden. So great. Yum. You guys, I'm so excited to see the enthusiasm out there. It really is the best summer red sauce I have ever had. And we're so lucky that we got tutelage from the queen herself, Safadia. Thank you so much, Safadia. Um, and you guys, this week, it's going to be a great week. We have Mom to Mom on, at 4 p.m. on Wednesday with Maria Sansone. And then you know what? Next Monday in the Chef's Pantry, we're with celebrity chef, culinary superstar, James Beard award winner and top chef, Karen Akunowitz, um, which is going to be great. We're, we're in for more delicious food, certainly. Thank you. Have something delicious tonight for dinner. We certainly are. Mm. Mm. <laughs>